So that begs the question, is it really worth it to cover crop in raised beds or should we just leave that for the in-ground garden plots? What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Friday, December 22nd here in South Georgia. And today we're gonna to try to answer a couple questions we've been getting a lot lately, which is can you do a cover crop in a raised bed and should you do a cover crop in a raised bed? Now before we address raised beds specifically, let's revisit some of the benefits of using cover crops in your backyard garden. Because if you've only ever grown food in raised beds and never done any cover crops, you may be wondering what's all the fuss about. So I can think of nine good reasons to grow cover crops in your backyard garden. And we'll go through all nine and explain them a little bit. So reason number one would be erosion control. Now, our property here is pretty flat. We don't have a lot of issues with the runoff, but not everybody has flat property. If you've got some hilly property and you leave exposed soil out there and you get some heavy rains, you might lose a lot of the soil in your garden. And so what the cover crop does is form this nice dense mat of roots that kind of anchors the dirt in place so when you do get heavy rain, it doesn't go anywhere. Reason number two would be nitrogen fixation. Now this is not going to apply to every single cover crop species out there, but it does apply to a lot of them, especially some of the ones we grow during the cooler months. So cover crops like clover and winter peas will fix atmospheric nitrogen, add it to your garden soil, and hopefully reduce the amount of nitrogen that you have to feed the vegetables that follow that cover crop. Number three would be nutrient scavenging. So a lot of these cover crops have really deep tap roots that penetrate way down deeper than most of the vegetables you grow. When you incorporate those cover crops into the soil, you bring a lot of those nutrients that have been scavenged from way down deep, higher up in the soil profile, and then they're available to the next round of vegetables you grow. Number four would be weed suppression, which we're certainly benefiting from in this plot here behind me, where we tend to have a lot of chickweed issues this time of year, since we've got this nice dense mat of cover crop. The chickweed can't really thrive. Haven't hardly seen any chickweed in here. So we're shading out all the weeds. We're out competing the weeds. We don't get weeds going to seed. And in the end, we reduce our weed seed bank and make gardening a lot easier. Number five, cover crops add organic matter to your soil, which helps your soil retain nutrients in the long run. If you're gardening on a large scale with a big in-ground garden, it's not always the most feasible thing to spread lots of compost over a big plot. So cover crops are a great way to get some organic matter in that soil. Number six, cover crops help us maintain what I like to call living soil. So if we have stuff growing in our soil, we get all these nice biological associations with the roots from those things that are growing. If we just leave a plot bare, we're probably not going to have as much active biology going on there. And so cover crops can really help with that. Number seven, cover crops allow us to do some natural biofumigation to manage soil-borne pests and pathogens. So we can take brassica cover crops like mustard or this rapeseed here behind me, incorporate that into the soil, releases these chemicals that help reduce the presence of those bad guys in your dirt. Number eight, cover crops are great for grazing, can help you save a good bit of money on animal food. So just like with these chickens here behind me, a bag of cover crop seed might cost about the same as a bag of chicken food, but with a bag of cover crop seed, I can feed these chickens for several months. Whereas a bag of chicken food, I'm probably going to run out in a few weeks. And lastly, number nine, cover crops really help with soil aeration. So if you have clay soils or really hard compacted soils, you can grow cover crops like daikon radish or other cover crops with a really long tap root. They'll poke holes in your soil, help it breathe a little better, help it drain a little bit better. So you're not just always dealing with hard or waterlogged soils. So those are all great reasons to be utilizing cover crops, but some of those benefits are not going to apply to raised beds. So we're not really worried about erosion with raised beds because we're dealing with a contained structure here. Even if we get a hard rain in this round raised bed, it might splash the soil around a little bit, but we're not going to lose any. And in my opinion, weed suppression in raised beds is not that big of an issue. 
Yeah, we'll get weeds in these raised beds, but we could pluck all these weeds out in just a couple minutes. It's not near as daunting as when we get weeds taking over one of our in-ground plots. And then obviously we can't graze these raised beds. I can't take a chicken, put it up there in one of those taller raised beds and tell it to stay there until it finishes eating it all. And lastly, we're really not worried about soil aeration in raised beds. Never heard of anybody filling raised beds with clay. Most people are filling it with nice, well-draining soil like we have here. So we don't have to worry about growing a cover crop to aerate the soil. So of those nine cover crop benefits I gave you earlier, I think only five of those would really apply to raised beds. That would be nitrogen fixation, nutrient scavenging, adding organic matter, keeping the soil living, and then biofumigation. So that begs the question, is it really worth it to cover crop in raised beds or should we just leave that for the in-ground garden plots? And so I think the answer to that question is gonna depend a little bit on your particular situation. Do you need those beds to provide food for you year round or do you have times or seasons when you can give them a break? In addition to those nine benefits I listed earlier, another reason why we grow so many cool season cover crops is because I don't need all six of these plots for cool season veggie production. So this time of year, I can grow more than what we need in just a couple of these 30 by 35 plots. But it's different in the warm season when we're growing things that take up a lot more space. Watermelons, pumpkins, we usually do a whole plot of sweet corn. So we're using all these plots during the warm season, but we don't necessarily need them all during the cool season. Now for these raised beds, we're constantly flipping these, harvesting something, pulling out something, and planting something else. So for example, in this bed, not long ago, we pulled out some warm season flowers, some ageratum we had in here, put down a little mushroom compost, added some soft neck garlic cloves, and they're already starting to sprout. So I've yet to find a need to cover crop my raised beds because I've always got some kind of herb or veggie growing in them. And even if I'm kind of in between seasons, I can still plant something in there, something fast growing like a greens mix or something like that, and still get some decent groceries in 20 to 30 days. But if you have extended periods of time, say two to three months where there's nothing growing in your raised beds, you could definitely benefit from having a cover crop there. So like I said earlier, it just depends on your situation. If you're growing food in your raised beds year round, continuously flipping them, probably not worth it, but it's way better than just leaving them bare. And since I just explained why we really haven't felt the need to do any cover crops in our raised beds, I felt it would only be fitting for me to contradict myself and show you how we could do a cover crop in a raised bed. So earlier today, I cut the last few heads of lettuce out of this bed. No worries, we got more coming along right there. I also pulled out our little drip system we had in here, left that intact. I can reinstall it whenever we're ready to grow groceries in here again. Got the soil leveled out, it looks ready to plant. And so if you're thinking about doing this, you might be wondering, well, what cover crops can I plant in a raised bed? And I can't really think of anything that would work for an in-ground garden, but wouldn't work for a raised bed. Cover crops usually stay where you put them. It's not like a sweet potato plant or a pumpkin plant that's gonna vine all over the place. So to give you an example, here's some stuff I have on hand. We've got some frosty brassim clover, we've got some rapeseed, we've got some winter peas, and we've got some hairy vetch. I could plant just one of these, or I could make a mix with all four, a mix with two or three of them. So I think what I'll do here, since I've got plenty enough seeds of each component, is just make me a little cocktail here in this raised bed. Now I'm not gonna do this like I would for an in-ground plot and mix it all up in a bucket, then throw it. I'm just gonna, pour me a handful or so of each ingredient and then we'll just kind of scatter it amongst the bed here. So we'll get our clover down then we'll get a little bit of rapeseed sprinkled in there. Add a few peas to the mix and then lastly a little bit of vetch. So that should be enough seeds to get some pretty good soil coverage in this bed. Last thing I'm going to do is just take my little scratcher here and just kind of incorporate those seeds into the soil a little bit. I don't need to cover them real deep. Just try to get a little bit better seed to soil contact than just having them sit on top. 
And so here in a minute, I'll soak that down pretty good with a hand nozzle and be sure to keep that soil nice and moist for the next few days until all those seeds germinate. And I should mention, if you're going to plant cover crops in the dead middle of winter like we're doing today, pick you a little stretch of warm weather. So it's warm back up pretty good around here now. I think we're in the 70s today. It's supposed to be fairly warm for the next few days. That should give us pretty good germination. I wouldn't want to do this if we were on a stretch of real cold weather where the germination could be significantly slowed. Now assuming all those seeds germinate and this little raised bed cover crop grows out like it should, I'll be sure to show you how we terminate it and it's really, really easy. We've done it before with some of our raised beds that had, you know, just complete spinach coverage in them or complete mustard coverage in them. We we'll basically just take a little shovel and go in there and cut up that big root mat and just flip everything over. It works really, really well, but I'll be sure to show you when we get ready to do that. And if you've got raised beds and grow cover crops in them, please do share your experiences in the comments below. That way other raised bed gardeners can read those comments and determine if it's worth doing in their raised beds. And as always, you can find these raised beds and some of the other products we use around here on our website at LazyDogFarm.com. And if you want to learn more about that rape seed that we just planted and why we're such a big fan of that now, check out this video right here. We'll tell you all the great benefits of growing that stuff like we're doing in that in-ground plot I showed you earlier. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.